Hey Internet! So as I let you know in my previous two videos, I'm home for a little while and yesterday the pilot episode of Rain, which is a new series on the CW about Mary Stewart or Queen of Scots as you may know her, um, just premiered and I really liked it. Um, it was a little bit different than I thought it would be. I thought it would be more like the Tudors or the White Queen, but if I were to describe it I would say it's actually kind of like the Tudors meets Gossip Girl. It definitely has an element of girliness to it. A lot of the fashions in it are actually a little bit more adventurous and different than what people would have worn at the time, but I think it makes it fun. It's not meant to be completely historically accurate, it's just meant to be entertaining. One of the things that I have just fell in love with watching the pilot is her hair and makeup. There is way more to her style than I thought there would be because at the time people would have worn very little makeup. If you google pictures of or paintings of Mary Stewart she looked pretty dowdy. You would not do a YouTube makeup tutorial based on her. Um, so I think it's really fun that they've made it young and interesting. Um, she has some amazing hair pieces going on so you'll see at the end of this tutorial I will show you how to create something like that for real life. I'll also show you my outfit because I always do that. I always like to include some style even if I'm doing a makeup tutorial and then I'm going to show you how to do this makeup look first of all um, right now and I love the way that this turned out because it is a statement neutral lip that has a little bit of pinky redness to it and then I did a smoky brown eye because there is one particular scene where you can see them applying coal to their lash line which I thought was really fun and interesting and there is definitely makeup going on on the show. It is not a no makeup look at all so I just kind of went for it and created something dramatic so I hope you guys like it and let's get right into it. One. My favorite budget friendly trick is to use an eyeliner pencil that is waterproof and creamy and the Makeup Forever Professional Aqua Eyes pencils definitely fall into that category. I like them better than the cream eyeshadow pots they have for kind of long term use because they don't dry out. You can just sharpen them. So this is a dark brown one in the color 2L and I'm just going to apply that over the eyelid, focusing on the lash line and the outer corner but spreading it up with my finger. And you'll know you're done with that stage when you have a good coverage on your eyelid. It might be a little messy on the inner corner but you haven't created a mess in the crease that is going to take you two hours to blend out because that's never fun. The next step you're going to do is go in with a medium shimmery brown. Now if your skin is darker than mine, I would recommend something like Max Mulch. I may even have used that if I wanted something a little bit darker myself. But I'm going to go in with one of my all-time favorite cheapies, which is the CoverGirl Shimmering Sands Eye Enhancers, and I'm just going to use the darkest brown, which is really actually more of a medium brown. And I'm going to pack that on with my favorite eyeshadow brush of the moment, which is the Sonia Kashuk number 28. This is a really good brush. really takes the work out of creating a really nice eye look on your lid. So just pack that on top of the base you created. And you'll see it gives a really nice subtle shimmer that makes the whole eye look that much softer and more flattering in with your favorite matte brown shadow and I'm going to be using the Naked Basics palette. Out of this palette I'm going to be using this shade, this shade, this shade, and that shade. So that is Venus for a highlight, Naked 2 for a blending color, Faint for a crease color, and Crave just on top of our eyeliner in a moment. So right now I'm going to go in with my Sonia Kasha crease brush, also a favorite, and just Put some of that dark brown shade in the outer corner of the crease. Definitely kind of trying to create that oval eye shape that is so pretty on Adelaide. I'm going to blend out that crease color. I'm going to be using Naked 2. And then with that brush, because I don't want to use another brush and dirty another brush, I'm just going to go in with Venus for a highlight. And it is really important to have a little bit of lightness because she is 
young, at least in the pilot. I don't know how fast the storyline is going to go, but so you want to keep it fairly fresh but sultry. The next step is to go in with your favorite eyeliner, and you could use the same one that you used as your base for sure, but my favorite eyeliner for the waterline and for the lash line as well is the Revlon Colorstay Eyeliner, and this is the color black brown um, just because it is so long lasting and it has a drier consistency so it just really stays where you put it it's got really really amazing pigmentation too and then I'm just gonna apply some of that to my waterline as well and because it is so long lasting you won't have to reapply this throughout the day at all to soften and smudge that a little bit, I'm going to go in with Crave and just finish that off by topping the eyeliner with some black powder. One and final step for the eyes is to use your favorite volumizing mascara. Mine is currently the Sephora Outrageous Volume Mascara because it's really thick. And dramatic. That is your finished eye look. For the cheeks, I really think that her skin is just really subtle and glowing but not overly pink or rosy so I'm gonna go in with my current favorite blush of the moment which is the MAC Plum Foolery blush and just apply that on the outer side of the apples of my cheek and just sweep it up. Sort of doing a little bit of blush contouring but in a really kind of subtle and young way. Now the lips are a little bit of a challenge because Mary Stewart does have beautiful, full lips and you can tell that she does use something on them, but the intention is still to have it look really natural and ancient in a way because there was not lip gloss at the French court at that time, that I am sure of. So instead of using a lip stain or lipstick, I want to show you a trick that I've been loving lately, which is to use lip liner on top of lip balm. So so what I did is I moisturized my lips with my EOS Strawberry Lip Balm and then I just took off most of the excess on my hand because I don't have a Kleenex right here. I'm very well organized for this tutorial. I'm going to use two colors. First I'm going to use the Rimmel 005 Pure Exaggerate Full Color Lip Liner Definer which is basically your average medium pink lip liner. Nothing exciting, you could definitely use one that you already have. If you guys do have a favored lip liner color or brand, let me know in the comments below because I think I would like to get some more of them. Um, so anyway, back to my lip liner. The second one I'm going to be using is the Maybelline New York color 50 Red and this is just a darker red but it's not a super dark color. It's still kind of a natural looking medium red. So with the first one I'm going to go in and fill in my lips completely. And you guys will have to excuse my chapped lips. They're just really dry right now from getting my braces removed recently. Use my finger to just kind of smudge the color in. We're basically using a process of layer and smudge and then that layer and smudge process is going to make this lip look look really natural and flattering and not overwhelming given that we've done a pretty smoky statement eye. Finally I have my last lip liner pencil and what I'm gonna do with this is draw on my finger. I'm just going to press that into my lips focusing mainly on the center. One. Okay, so after I finished my lips, I went and washed my fingers because they were covered in red and pink eyeliner, but that is okay. Now we're ready to move on to the hair. Now, of course, this is completely optional and maybe not wearable for every instance of real life, but because you guys will see that the outfit I've put together is fairly simple, I just fell in love with the way they styled Mary's hair. So here is a little vintage necklace that I picked up when I lived in England. You can see it's a really pretty pewter color and it's got a little hook here 
and clasp and we're going to use that to attach it to the hair so basically to secure it to my head and when she meets the French court she has this beautiful really ornate floral headpiece so this is just basically a simpler version of that. First of all you're gonna have a good look at your head and place it where you want it to go and where you think it's most flattering. I think it's most flattering to leave some hair kind of at the front um, poking out and then you're gonna lift a large section of hair right where you want to secure it and fold it over. You might want to clip it but my hair is heavy enough that it will just stay there. And then you're gonna take the end of your necklace wherever the clasp is and just kind of place it to the back. And then with several little bobby pins with the wavy edge facing down you're just going to secure it there and because it's basically behind my ear it's kind of hard for me to show you guys but you can imagine I'm sure I'm just going to stick that bobby pin right into the clasp and it's going to stay there really well and be totally invisible because there is kind of the volume of my ear to hide the bobby pins if that makes sense and then the hair is just going to fold back over as soon as we are finished With that hair on top of the necklace until basically you have a hairstyle that will keep people guessing as to whether you're wearing a necklace or a fancy headpiece or some other mystery that they can't figure out. So here is the finished look. I want to tell you a little bit about the style that I put together so you guys already know about the pewter colored hair piece and the way I styled my hair and makeup. Um, for accessories I just tried to keep it really simple so I'm wearing some little pearl drops and a silver wrist cuff which I think is really neat with this outfit. And then I'm just wearing this really pretty sparkly sweater from Gap. It's actually purchased last year but I've seen a lot of pieces like this in stores this season because sweatshirts like this that are kind of loose are really in as is embellishment so this is a really pretty dark gunmetal color and then I just paired it with some jeggings also from Gap in a blue color and some black suede booties from Duo I absolutely love these and I like the way they add a little bit of a modern edge to this outfit so this is the finished look I hope you guys like it and I'll see you in my next video bye